Welcome to episode number 19 of The Roar, the show for all things Hershey Cubs, players, coaches, personnel, and news. I'm Clay Thomas, but you all know that as your host and broadcaster for the Cubs this season. Joining me today are now three Cubs players. Josh had a chance for three goalies last week. Now I got three skaters. I got Colin Lakaitis, David Cook, and Jamison Flint. Boys, thanks for joining me. How is everybody doing today? Good. Good. Doing good. All right. You guys are nearing the end of a long season. You just got done playing at home with the, the for the final time of the regular season, hoping to get that uh, home playoff game. What are you guys uh, looking forward to coming up with this uh, showcase here coming up this weekend? Uh, going away is usually always fun um, because we get to spend time with each other and playing four games back to back. Sometimes it's difficult, but I find it pretty fun. Just come out with four big wins that we need for the standings, home ice advantage for playoffs. Yeah, four four wins would be nice. We need to get the uh, home ice advantage. So each of you has yet to play in the USPHL until this season, at least or in the Premier League and everything. And you all decided to choose the Cubs for your first season in the Premier League. What was that decision making process like for each of you? And why did you guys choose Hershey? Uh, for me, I was pretty much just finding a team to play for this year. Uh, and I wanted to make the jump to juniors from youth. And it was somewhere I could play from from home. So, and I already knew Brennan beforehand, so it was a pretty easy decision. Yeah, I knew Brennan from Palmyra, and I played there last year with Dave. It was like an easier decision, close to the home. And it was just, I talked to Brennan about it, and I liked it. Yeah, I, mine was more of a uh, on the spot decision. I mean, I was planning on playing double A for another year because I still had a, one more year of youth, and, uh, and, I was just like, why not? Let's go try out for the Cubs. Uh, we had we. I used to have a player that played with me, uh, Jacob Ropeman, who was the first year first captain of the Cubs, and so we were just like, why not? Let's go try out. I said, I said I wasn't going to sign the contract if I got offered one, but uh, <laughs> I ended up signing it anyway. So here I am now. And you all like have like some uh, unique characteristics that you bring to the ice. I mean, every single one of you uh, are are great hustlers and I love that fact that it seems like everybody on the team just has that factor in them where no matter what time of the game or what the score says everybody's always going to hustle I mean we saw it from David the other night um with one of his with a with an amazing goal I think it was like I think it was like last weekend or something at the end when you or at least at the away games um what was that Friday or Saturday that you had the two goals late Colin's always pushing to get something. Jameson, I mean, you're everywhere, man. <laughs> and you're and you you fear nothing with, with your size as well. Like Carson, like you guys, it seems like anybody on the team that lacks in size makes up for it in their aggressiveness as well. Just talk talk about that and trying to play fearless and like, you know, use your body despite your size. And then I mean for Colin, being the big guy that he is, being so tall, you how do you um go about trying to be more physical knowing that you're one of the bigger guys on the ice? Usually I just get into the mindset of when I go to hit someone or, or I have someone in the corner that, that I'm stronger than you, I'm bigger than you, I'm going to put my body into you, and that, that's it. That's it. Simple as that. Hey, sometimes it's the simplest things can be the best mindset. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like obviously I'm not the biggest of guys, so I try to play big to lack, uh, make up for that size, and I usually as a starter game especially, I try to make big big hits, big physical plays to get energy going early. I, I, I've always taken hitting not uh, as an aspect to knock somebody down, but in order to separate the puck from the player. And so I really don't care if I fall down or not. I don't care if I get hurt. I'll get right back up and get back into play. So I don't really try to hurt somebody, but definitely get the bench going. Now, when it comes to what I want to say is, I get oh, well, the team chemistry is for one thing, but what do you guys have to speak on about – how everybody, you know, throughout the year formed together rather so quickly because in the beginning of the year, it just seemed like no matter who you guys played, it just seemed like an easy win. You guys seemed all together. What went into that? And like, how did you guys think that formed so quickly and so fast? I think it was because like in throughout September and even late August, we had practice pretty much every day. So we were spending time with each other on and off the ice from all hours of the morning, pretty much. And I think that helped us grow together. And as we played, it, the bonds grew even stronger. 
Yeah, like Dave said, we had like a two-week stretch or a three-week stretch of practice every day. And we had we had events and team dinners that brought us together, like time off the ice to hang out and talk. Like, I, I think that really brought us all together. Again, like they said, you know, the two the two or I mean, it was about a month of training camp all together, and we were just with each other every single day. Um, I mean, even after practice, we'd hang out for another hour or two with each other. So I think that really helped. Now, here's uh, one thing I did notice, and this is a little random, but there's quite there's quite the uh, the couple heads of lettuce on on the pod right now. But then, David, you used to have the flow, man. But what happened? Why'd you have to go and cut it? I got it cut yesterday. It was just getting kind of too long for me. I think um, <laughs> every year on this time, I usually get it cut short to get it grown back in pretty nice. So, yeah. But uh, you other two, you're good. you guys are just going to leave it for the playoffs and, like, let it go? Or are you guys going to have to wind up getting it cut soon too? I'm I'm keeping mine. I'm keeping mine for playoffs. I might get it cut once it's over, but I'm keeping mine. <laughs> I think my hair has been at this length for the last four years, so it's just a trend. really yeah, yeah. The curls just kind of like keep it the same. They just stay. It just stays. Hey, eh, still a flow though. I mean, hey, you're still the mustache still, is new though. That's the, the new mustache. Thing. The mustache is nice. I the mo, I can see. I think Colin has one. I can see from here at least a goatee. Yeah, yeah. I, a little I, bit. I, I noticed a trend. I think a lot of guys started to follow that trend this year, and then some guys came off. Some guys kept it. I mean, I know Coach Thompson has been riding the muzzy for the longest time, but his his beard kind of started to grow in again. Do you think he started that trend, or did everybody else just kind of do it their own way? I think over the month of November, I think everybody started growing it out because of the whole November thing. And, like, I had a pretty good mustache going. I shaved it off after, but a lot of guys are just stuck with them. Yeah, I don't I, – Brennan's had his for the whole season, yeah. but I think November <laughs> – I got shaved mine at the end of November, and then it – I just let it go back in for now. Yeah, I don't think a single guy on this team has seen me without a mustache on a one-month stretch where I didn't have one. <laughs> you found one look and you just kept it. I like it. Yeah. Keep things the same. Hey, you look good, you feel good, you play good. That's all that matters, whether it's style or if it's facial hair or not. But uh, speaking of November uh, being uh, Veterans Appreciation Month and everything like that, that reminded me of a question that I wanted to ask you guys. So you've seen and had to have worn all the jerseys, you know, the special alternates, the cancer awareness, the the new black alternate that you guys got to choose. Um, what was it? The the digital camo one for, for the um, military appreciation night. And I think the Hershey one for like Hershey together or together night uh, when the bears were in town. If you guys had to rank, what would be your favorite jersey that you've worn that hasn't been one of your regulars? Which one would it be? I think mine are either our black jerseys or like our new alternates or the pink ones we wore. I like both of them a lot. I'd say my favorite non like regular jersey would be the camo one. And then the pink, I didn't get to wear the pink one actually. <laughs> I think the camo and the, bl and the blacks. I like the blacks. Yeah. I, I got to be the same with Colin. You know, camo and the blacks are pretty good. I'd have to agree. I mean, can't, you can't go wrong with the the cancer awareness one, but at the same time, there's just something about the black, like an all black, like a black hat yeah. or like the digital yeah. camo. Like you can't go wrong with it, even though it's something, it's not something new. It just always looks nice. And uh, do you, so going back to, you know, your style of plays on the ice, do you guys have anybody in the NHL or past or present that you have looked up to that you try to mimic your, your play after? I'm trying to think. I don't think I have anybody. Maybe, maybe like Patrice Bergeron. I really try to play a good two way game. That's what I center my game around. I, my dad, like, since I was able to like start hitting, my dad's always thought of me as like a Scott Stevens. Like, just go out there and hit people. Like, he's always <laughs> – like, when I was probably 16 every game, he talked to me about it and stuff. And I was always, like, the biggest one. And to this day, he still says it. So, I'd say Scott Stevens. Uh, Jonathan Marshall Salt was the first guy that came to my head. Uh, But I don't really – I really don't try to model after NHL players. I just kind of do my own thing. Um, Respect that. But, I mean, Jonathan Marshall Salt's probably closest. He's tiny. There's a lot. And I think with like the 
your hairstyle to it. And I mean, this is like a little bit of favoritism on my part being a Flyers fan, but it kind of reminds me of like Claude Giroux a little bit. Just the way, just your size and like how you like don't care about who you're going to go up against sometimes the way it seems. And only because it reminds me of his crushing hit on Sidney Crosby in the playoffs back in the day. It's one of my all-time favorite hockey moments, even though we didn't win the cup that year. But um, now I want to get into some more things, you know, off the ice. I try to try to, you know, let the other parents and other fans know, you know, more about some of these guys about off the ice and how they are and like what they like. So what do you guys like to do when it's not hockey related, like on the ice? What do you guys like to do, like hobbies, interests, stuff like that? Uh, I'm a pretty boring guy off the ice, actually. Um, <laughs> I play golf in the off season. I'm not very good at it. I shoot probably in the, in the hundreds, hundred ten. Hey, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. It's, it, golf is one of the hardest sports to do, and it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, and other than that, I don't really do that much. Come the off season, I like I like work out a lot. Like I try to put on a lot of muscle. I like golf too. I'm not I'm not terrible like 80s, 90s, if anything. It's just for fun. Yeah, it's for fun. That's all that matters. Yeah, I'm terrible at golf, so <laughs> golf is not on my off season. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if I know how to drive a drive the ball, whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I do soccer. I, I I used to play that all the time. So going back to that's kind of fun. Um, but I also play a lot of video games, and, and you know, NHL is the big one. Yeah. I do that every day after practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. yeah. What are your guys' favorite uh game modes to play? Do you like online or you like to get on with friends or you like to make like your own like franchise and stuff like that? I haven't played in year in a couple of years, so it's been a while. I used to play with my friends and we would just get online and there was always these two guys. It didn't matter what was going on. If the if we just started the game, they would just start fighting immediately, go off and like sit their penalty minutes and then come back out and fight again no matter what. So it was always like we had three guys and like two computer players every single time. Yeah, me and Colin usually play online with each other, me, him, and Slayball. Yeah. We do that about every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me and me and Rufy have our own team as well. So still still waiting for these guys to catch up to us in the standings. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, me and Rufy just play after practice. Who's who do you, who's the best Chell player on the team? And you can't say yourself. That's the easy I, answer. You can't say yourself. Machete. I I really don't know because I haven't seen everybody play. I've heard Machete. I've heard I've heard Machete's pretty good. Machete's very good. So I'll go with Machete. Oh, that's right. Machete plays with us. That's the other one. <laughs> Do you guys like to play any any other video games, or is it mostly just chill? Or do you like you know like Call of Duty? Or are you guys still on the Fortnite you know hype train and stuff like that? I I play Call of Duty sometimes, but it's mainly just chill. Yeah, I I play Call of Duty. We play Rainbow once in a while, but yeah, mostly mostly NHL. I lost interest in Call of Duty. That that game <laughs> really dropped off. Oh wow, he does. I, he's not I, a big I, fan. I, 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 last time I played Call of Duty was Modern Warfare 2019, and I thought that game was amazing. So, mm -hmm. and that, that game was great. Was so, yeah, so no no Fortnite. Are you guys just – did you guys miss that before it, like, became really popular, or were you guys, like, really into gaming when that happened? Because I'm just curious. I don't like Fortnite particularly now. Like, when I was in high school, which I think I'm, like, five years older than you guys and stuff, so – I feel old trying to talk about that because I noticed that, you know, Jameson, uh, 10 days early, but happy early birthday on the recording of this Thank podcast uh, because I'm about to turn 24 and you're about to turn 19. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. I can do math. Perfect. Um, so um, did you, I remember when I was in high school is when it really first started and that was like, we all think that was like the prime time. So were you guys just all kind of like, eh, this isn't it for me. I was big into it when it first came out. Like, yeah. All throughout middle school for me, that's when it really like blew up that I was playing it every day pretty much. Yeah, it's like probably seventh seventh or ninth grade. I played it every day. That's all I wanted to do. I I didn't play Fortnite. So okay. <laughs> one guy that get does doesn't say I say I don't play it. I think I played one game of Fortnite. You probably yeah, you probably tried it at one point like, ah, this ain't for me, but 
So yeah. it sounds like to me like Colin and David, when they were in middle school, they were the ones piss or making every like 20, 20 year old angry when they were being so sweaty and murking them all the time. Probably. About, about right. <laughs> Probably over the headset screaming at him like, <laughs> and just making them mad. But uh, so this is usually Josh's question, but now that we've started to do more solo podcasts as hosts, trying to further along, trying to get everybody on because we kind of misjudged the fact that you really can't do one player a week. That kind of started to catch up on us near this time. That's why he had three last week and I had two and I have you guys. But what is uh, a must-have pregame meal? Or do you guys have any, like, mu- like you have to do, like, su- certain superstitions in order to, you know, play well or you think you have, like, the good vibes going? For me, uh, I have – one thing I drink before every game, and then I have an order that I get my gear, and I drink white Gatorade before every game. And then when I'm getting dressed, I always, like, whether it's my skate shin pads, elbow pads, gloves, I always put the right one on first. I don't know why, but it's just stuck with me. There's no real pregame meal. I just try and drink a lot of water or Gatorade. But being – I you play a lot of soccer. Like, you play Sue and stuff before every game. I try to. I'm guessing Jameson, you play a lot of Sioux foot too and everything, and you're probably pretty good at it if you used to play soccer. Yeah, I'm pretty good at Sioux. Who's who's the best? Not naming yourself, Jameson. Colin's like you better say uh, my name. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, Colin's <laughs> good, but I, I got to give it to Evan. Evan's pretty. Okay. No, I wouldn't. He's, I wouldn't go Evan. Evan cheats. He's a try. <laughs> Evan cheats. Evan cheats. Right. I'd go. Rufy's pretty good. Okay. Rufy's terrible. No, Rufy's pretty good. <laughs> he's gonna hate me for saying that. I mean, he's if we're best. talking about the worst, it's a hundred percent slay. Yeah, yeah slay is awful. <laughs> he's getting better though. Sounds like we're gonna have to have those guys are gonna have to come on next week. We're gonna have to actually question him about that then. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Yeah. I really don't have a routine though. I I just come to the rink. At, yeah. And then I play Sue, and then I get dressed and. It's pretty simple. But I like super- that. You just seem like you're a very simple, simplistic person, and you just come in and you're just ready to play. Yeah, I I try to visualize, and I think I do a good job with that about ten minutes before a game. But that's that's I think the craziest it gets. I mean, everybody has their thing. I mean, if you if you're like Jameson, you just you're just ready. You just want to get out there, and it, it is what it is. And then other guys, like I'm always going to come back to it. I swear. I think I mention it every week now that Marco just will not eat before a game, and it's to this day and forever will blow my mind. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I couldn't do that. No, I saw him eating before the Wilkes game. Oh, that was the first time I think I've seen him eat a meal. Yeah. I've was, seen him eat some Chipotle before games sometimes, I think. Okay. Okay. I think it was – I don't remember if it was the Wilkesburg game or if it was the weekend before, but I, I ran into him. I was like, did you eat today? And he goes, no. And I was like, why? Well, he, I can tell you he doesn't eat here before a game. Okay. He doesn't at all touch the kitchen. Okay. Okay. Um, so, David, I'm assuming then the white Gatorade is your favorite, right? If yeah. You're you're, okay. So for the other two, then what would have to be your favorite Gatorade? Oh, uh, the strawberry. It's strawberry. My it's so hold on. Good. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Did you just refer to a Gatorade flavor as the yeah, actual I flavor would, name, not the color? Like pink, <laughs> red. I don't know. Yeah. It's okay. Pink. I said pink. I probably say pink, but it's that's my favorite. That's okay. For sure. You you real pink vibes today, man. You get you, one of your favorite jerseys was the breast cancer. You got the pink hoodie on, the pink Gatorade. <laughs> Yeah. I like it. You're sticking to a theme. That's nice. <laughs> Any Damn. of the blue ones are good. Any of the blue ones? Any of the blue ones. Okay. I've always been, like, growing up, I was always either orange or yellow. And then when they came out with the white one, that was that was my best. That was my favorite. So I'm with David on this one. But uh, yeah. so speaking of uh, Gatorade colors, do you guys happen to be uh, football fans or, you know, excited for Sunday's uh, – Super Bowl, yeah. I, I'm not. A, I'm a football fan, but I'm not excited for. It. I'm a Bills fan, so seeing the Chiefs there again is pretty, pretty heartbreaking. Jameson, what about you? I'm a Ravens fan, so when I watched the uh, 
us lose to the Chiefs. It was a uh, pretty bad. Um, but I mean, I hope the Chiefs lose again, or no, they lose this time. And they don't win again. Yeah, no, I can feel your guys' pain because one, I'm an Eagles fan, so I lost. I saw my team lose last year after leading by ten at halftime, and then now the Niners are in it, so the Super Bowl is not my favorite either. But so, do you guys have like any real like predictions? Like, I know you guys like Jamison just said he hopes the Chiefs lose, but do you have like any kind of certain predictions you think might happen? Like, do you think certain guys might score? I'll call Christian McCaffrey touchdown for sure. Yeah. That's the, would... All right, that's the easiest thing to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw an Instagram reel, and I'm gonna live by it. Twenty four seventeen. Sadly, the Chiefs, and then uh, Jason, uh, what's his name, Travis Kelsey, poses the Taylor Swift. Mm, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. I heard about that. Somebody's. I think there actually might be a betting line on that somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised. That's Jr. Yeah. I would say, uh, spe- uh, going back to Gatorade colors. Who? What color do you think will will be uh dumped on the winning head coach? Ooh, that's a great question. Purple's been a hot one as of late. Like yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say yeah, purple. I was, I was gonna say purple, purple too. I was gonna say no white. It's it seems so easy to choose red considering both teams' main color is red, but I feel like in the past that hasn't happened with either of them. Yeah, I think I'll go with purple. I think they're gonna stick with purple. Yeah, that's what I think too. Yellow, yellow, yeah. Going, going with the 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 original or no? It was or, was orange the original or yellow? Or am I wrong? I have no idea. I have no idea I, either. I think it was yellow, but I'm, was not, yellow. I'm not sure. Okay, I was just trying to think because I was trying to remember. There used to be that the one commercial where it showed like the different like forms of the bottle like over time, and I was just thinking about that because I remember seeing them plop one down. But in my mind, I can't see orange or yellow. I see both, and it's screwing with my head. But um, was my, oh yeah. Do you guys think uh the national anthem is going to be over or under the projected time when that comes out? I have no idea. Yeah. I, I... Ha- have you guys ever tried to guess that? No, I I, I guessed the Gatorade last year. I got that what, right. What was it last year? I actually don't even remember because I turned it. I think, I, I think I it was head. purple. Actually. I think it was purple. Actually. Okay. I think so. I don't really remember. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Now, here's a question. If you guys go ahead and go up and win it all this year, can you guys let me know what the color of the Gatorade might be or the Powerade or the or whatever it is you guys have on the sidelines that might be coming in case there are some lines for that? Light blue. Yeah, light yeah blue. we only have one Gatorade powder, it's and it's, blue. Light, it's light blue. <laughs> light blue. Yeah. And it's, it's always spilled all over the locker room. <laughs> Oh, That's geez. not my fault. I promise. That sounds like a lie. I think uh, not pointing fingers. I think it's a meal. <laughs> Somebody's always spilling it. Yeah, I, I, I personally spill- never touch it, but sometimes I I find powder all over the floor. <laughs> what um? What was I gonna say? Um. What's uh? What's it been like having Cubby around the team now since he's joined the the squad? It's been, it's been, it's not something I'm used to, but it, it definitely brings some like fun before games. I think seeing him skate around is kind of funny sometimes. Yeah, it just brings, brings good energy. It's fun. It's not all serious. We're going to have fun too. Uh, it just brings energy. I, I mean, I don't have much to say about Covey. I don't interact with him that much, but <laughs> um, he sounds fun. If you guys had to choose, who brings the most energy and the most noise and vibes for the games? Which player would that be? Like the like the the team's best hype man, I should say. Dave. I'd I'd say Jr. Since I can't say myself. Okay. Probably Jr. I'd go Jr. What do you What do you try to do, David, to try to get the boys fired up? I just tr- try to be loud on the bench, especially early in the games. Like, whenever there's a big play, like, goal makes a big save, there's a good hit, just get the bench rattling. Just make make noise. Never never a wrong thing to make some noise. I mean, I love it. I love when, 
I don't love when you guys get scored on, but every time it seems like that does happen, you guys are able to retaliate pretty quickly. I mean, we saw it, uh, I believe it was last weekend after going down by one and then just rattling off goal after goal after goal. Um, and it kind of seemed to spark uh, after the first one had uh, that they scored. I can't – I'm blanking on who it was that you guys played. I should know I this. I think it was Bro- Brooklyn because I, I don't think I played that game. No. I'd have to look it up. Oh, yeah, it, it was it was Brooklyn because then you guys rattled off five straight. Yeah. Um. So what what how does the team you know form who's how do you guys kind of like regroup and reset when the when you guys get down because it always seems like no matter what happens in games you guys find a way to you know either come back or like or make it interesting or even come back and, all, and oftentimes win because that happened a lot during like the twelve game win streak and you know early on and later on in the year you guys never seem to get too down on yourselves. I think we kind of just tried to like erase it from our minds and just try to get the next one, make that our main focus. I think when we all come together after going down, it makes a big difference. I know when we go down or we get scored on, just, I just know we have enough skilled guys and we play together as a team. We have enough heart to come back and get two or three goals right away. Yeah, it's it's good when we come together as a team and you know really like you know get some sparks going, get a hit. You know, maybe pop pop a goal in there, and then we're back. Have you guys speaking of you know the that Brooklyn game? Have you guys ever seen, uh, in your hockey careers, ever seen a coach get ejected, and then following that, there is no coach left to coach the team. It has to be run by players. No, no I've, I've I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, I've never seen it. Uh, my coach did it. Oh, she. <laughs> yeah, he he told the ref that uh. I hope you're dead before Christmas, and then. Uh, oh Lord! And then, well, he's from Switzerland, so I guess it's okay. But I don't know, and he got kicked out immediately. <laughs> I think it was a little uh, uh, salt to the to the wound there for himself when he was still yell- barking and yelling at the referee, and then he yeah. tripped over the bench when he walked out. Did you guys? Did you guys see that too? Because I know the yeah. crowd. Was, the crowd was kind of happy funny. with that. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I heard every single word he said. Yeah, I, we've we've all kind of like found out now what he said, and it wasn't it wasn't too great. Um, putting it lightly, but yeah. did you guys like talk to any of the other players about that, like from Brooklyn side, and be like, what just happened, or did they have anything to say about it either? I didn't talk. I know I didn't talk to anyone. I know I was on I was on the ice when it happened, so I didn't okay. get a chance to. Talk. Yeah, I wasn't playing that game, so I didn't get a chance to either. Oh yeah, I, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. I talked to a couple guys, but I mean, all they were saying is that they want to go home. <laughs> that's that's what I was hearing. Oh wow. Um, but even still, I'm just I keep going back to this game because it was such an interesting moment when uh, Bourget, because I talked to him about it last week, when he crashed into the goalie uh, inadvertently because he's going for the puck, and I don't know why the goalie came out when literally. Every single skater from each team was inside the zone. He came out of the net to get the puck and ran into him and then got swarmed by multiple aviator skaters. But then Justin LaBelle just comes out of nowhere and like steps up and, you know, tries to defend his own teammate. What is that? How does it feel to know that you guys have somebody like that on your team that's going to step up and have your guys backs? And I know he's not the only one because you guys seem to everybody seems to have everybody's back. But what's that like knowing that, like, if you get into some trouble, somebody's going to be there for you? Yeah, it, it feels good. I mean, I think Justin did that in Detroit, too. We had one there was a big scrap in that game, and I think Luke Shaw got in a fight in that game, too. I saw that. I saw a video on that. Yeah, but it yeah, it feels good. It, like it, that really gels us together when you know like everybody's working together and they're gonna have everybody everybody's back. Yeah, it's it's just great to know. Like I've always prided myself on either protecting my teammates or or being there if they need if they get in a, a scrum or something. But it's it's great to know that someone else will be there if I get in one. Yeah, it's 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 nice to know that if I get my you know butt laid out, then Colin here will come over and you know. Beat him up for me. Let's call him. Maybe we'll just have to start calling him the enforcer from now on. I guess if he's if he, if he's got this trend to him. Uh, all right. So we're kind of running short on time here because again, there's only forty minutes capped on uh, Zoom meetings because I don't have I don't pay for an account. 
So we have a little bit of time left. So we got the playoffs coming up. I mean, I know you guys have a showcase coming up first. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but as you go into this final push uh, for a st- for that third place standing spot at the least, what's the message between, you know, the coaches and the players? And, you know, what are some things you guys want to key up and focus on heading into this final stretch and then into the playoffs? I think we really just have to focus on like finishing strong and like not playing down to other teams levels. I think sometimes some games this year, we've had problems with doing that. And I think this weekend will be a big show for that because we, if we play our best hockey, we should come out with four wins. I think just playing a full 60 minutes and, and recently our, our D zone has been a little shaky and hopefully turn that around turning and coming out of the uh, showcase. We played two good teams after the showcase too. Yeah, I mean, playing a full 60 is really important. Uh, I think we've struggled a couple, for a couple games now trying to do that. Um, so if we can do that lockdown defensively, um, I think we could get four wins here, and that will give us a lot of momentum coming up to playoffs. All right, sounds like sounds good, guys. I'm glad you guys were able to join me, and um, props to you guys for, you know, that, run, that was run pretty smooth the way you guys were able to flow with your answers. I like that. And I don't know, like to have to too many, you know, pauses be like, oh, okay, now you go. So that was, that was awesome for myself. Uh, a little less stress for myself on this one. But uh, with that, boys, uh, Jameson, Colin, David, thank you guys for joining me on this edition of The Roar. I'm Clay Thomas. Find us on YouTube, Hershey Cubs The Roar, as well as at Hershey Cubs, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, or Hershey Cubs on Facebook. Everybody knows the drill. Hit that like button, subscribe, follow us on all accounts, and fear the roar.